In August 2001, actor James Woods was on a flight from Boston to Los Angeles when he observed some Middle Eastern passengers acting strangely. He told authorities what he saw, and the FBI has apparently corroborated that it may have been a dry run for the 9-11 hijackers. I was on a flight uh, without going into the details of, of what made me suspicious of these four men, although it would have been blatantly obvious to the most casual observer. Uh, I took it upon myself to go to the flight attendant and ask to speak to the pilot of the plane. The first officer came out. I reported to him that I felt that the four men, and I said, can you look over my shoulder and see who I'm talking about? And he said, uh, yeah. <laughs> I said, I think they're going to hijack this plane. I mean, everything they're doing, and I explained to him these details, which I've been asked to keep private until whatever jurisdiction, you know, uh, whatever trials may take place. Uh, their behavior was such that, uh, that, that I felt they were going to hijack the plane. I also said I'm very much aware of how serious it is to say I'm an American aircraft in flight, the word hijack. So yeah. I'm saying this because I really have reason to believe it's true. As I found out later that not only was, did he make a report, but the flight attendant also made a report of my suspicions to the FAA. When I got home that night, it had been a very turbulent flight. I had said to uh, this woman I'm dating and, and uh, my girlfriend and, and a, my best friend, they said, that was the flight. And I said, well, aside from the terrorists and the turbulence, it was fine, which was now in retrospect, not such a very funny joke, but it was August 1st and nobody was thinking right. along those lines. And uh, when 9-11 happened, we were all stunned and we all happened to be at my house that evening. And my friend Scott said to me, you know, remember that flight you took in August? I said, yeah, I've been thinking about it all day. He said, well, maybe you should call the FBI. And I said, I'm sure they're being inundated, but I thought it over and I called the local office and within two minutes got a hold of a very intelligent young man, a special agent there, um, who uh, took the report. And I said, I hope I'm not wasting your time. He said, well, we have so many uh, reports coming in. And he said, and by the way, even if this leads to something, we don't like to backwash information to people because in case they have to go to a trial and be witnesses or whatever. So you won't hear from us. I said, well, great. And he said, but we appreciate your calling. Mm -hmm. Quarter to seven the next morning, I got a phone call that actually wakes me up. And he said, uh, we want to talk to you about the flight that you took in August. I said, oh, did the, did the manifest match of any of the flights yesterday and my, my flight? He said, well, we can't tell you that. I said, well, look, I'll get ready and I'll, you know, I'll come down to the, uh, to the federal building. He said, we're outside your house. We'll just wait wow. for you. Wow, 7.15. <laughs> so this I, was serious. Quarter seven in the morning. I said, uh, and I... And this is the only funny part of any of this. I said, how did you know where I lived? And there was a pause. He said, uh, we're, the we FBI. Right. we're the FBI. Thank you. So they came in and I said, look, I, I'm dying to know, were these the guys? And he said, well, we've had 36,000 tips in one day. And there's two of us and we're going to be at your house all this morning. So you can do the math, but we can't tell you. you know. So mm -hmm. since then, I have identified for sure uh, two of them as two of the terrorists. Really? Uh, who actually were not on flight 11, but one was on flight 175 and one was on flight 77. And I've been told unofficially, not by the FBI, but by someone else in a, actually a higher level of government, believe it or not, just through a coincidence, through a mutual friend, that all four of them were terrorists involved. That, that is it, unbelievable. So there was a, basically a rehearsal with these guys would do. Right, but, but what's significant about this is that it was a rehearsal with four men and I, I can't say it as a fact that they were the four, but I've been led to believe without going into details of how. Uh, that they were on different flights. So the notion that they were separate cells, um, and this is tricky territory, but I think in the Masari trial there's going to be some contention that you know, he was a soldier and didn't know what was going to happen until he right. stepped on the plane and then decided in a fit of good conscience not to be a terrorist anymore. In fact, the fact that these two people were identified by myself and other people and were on the Boston LA flight and ended up dying on two other flights of the four flights uh, on September 11th uh, shows that they what were an amazing story. There was and this is the first time I've ever heard this. This is the first time you're telling a story. Yes. So it was just you and these four guys in first class. Nobody else. No, right? no, there was there a couple, couple other guys. Yes, there were was. they nervous too, or was it just you picking you know, these guys out? I, as I explained to the FBI, they said, "What was your first instinct?" And aside from certain things like four guys getting on a transcontinental flight without any hand luggage, who. It's funny. I, I notice behavior because I guess I'm an actor, and it's kind of what yeah, I do. You always living. watch people, right? I, I just kind of observe people. It's something right. I've always been fascinated by. Sort of like that scene in Annie Hall where Woody Allen and Diane Keaton sit and watch people and yeah. sort of talk about who they might be. And there were four guys. When the flight attendant, who was a woman, came up to them, they literally ignored her like she didn't exist, which is sort of a kind of it's Taliban, kind of, weird, yeah. kind of a Taliban, you know, idea of womanhood as a, you know, not even a human being. I mean, it seems their, their disrespect for women is so extraordinary, and and they didn't order alcohol, and they just they said to me, you know, what made, what did you think these guys were? I said, well, I thought they were the four law enforcement officers or four terrorists, in that they had that thing right. that guys who are undercover or on a mission 
have between each other, and it's impossible to explain. Well, you're lucky. Well, you're, you're absolutely lucky that they didn't decide to do it a month before. By now, the way, one thing I must clear up that, sure. that, that has been sort of misreported in the press. I did not report this, this to the FBI before September Right, 11th. just the FAA. And it, and it was only done by, as I understand it, the flight crew, mm -hmm. as I've been told later.